the season. As you might expect, the vote was unanimous, but uh, I know as much as this individual will say he didn't do it alone, I think it's pretty clear the Ravens wouldn't be in the spot they're in right now as the number one seed heading into the postseason without his spectacular play over the course of the season. So I have a hunch he might get a few more honors uh, over the course of the next few weeks, but the 2023 Ravens MVP, as voted by the local media, is Lamar Jackson. Thank you all. It's an honor. I appreciate you all so much, man. You all mean a lot to us, you know, in the community. So I just want to thank you all. Nice that it's unanimous, so you don't have to ask which one of us didn't vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> that that's a lot. I mean, it means a lot, man. That's love. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, what's your focus this week? Uh, just getting better. Um, you know, we had a couple of days off, but, you know, just getting back in the swing of things, um, just staying loose, you know, staying prepared for the game, you know, next week. Uh, that's all, you know, just staying focused on that. Small things, clean up details and stuff like that. How you celebrated your birthday? I, I just hung out with my family. That's all I did, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. That, Lamar, your that thing you've talked about, not looking ahead, <clears throat> staying zeroed in on the moment, do you think you're better at that today than you were when you're 22, 23 years old? Yeah, just just from experience, though. That, that's why I say I'm better at it now. You know, probably uh, when I was 22, it was like, you know, I'm just going to stay locked in. But you're 22 years old, you still got so much to see, you know, um, even at 27. But just just to how, how things went before and I'm, me seeing different things, that's what got me so lazy, locked down. How about your uh, impressions of Dalvin Cook, now teammate? Awesome. Uh, 9 5 4 3 0 5 combination going on, you know, Miami, Brown County. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited, you know. I was happy about the uh, situation. I, was, I reached out to him uh, before the season, you know, with the little Jets and, you know, when he was signing with Jets or whatever before then. But, um, you know, God works in mysterious ways, and, you know, he's here now, so that's, that's dope. Mar Mar Any of the four playoff opponents that you have played before, um, have you started even scouting ahead, or is it sort of like, hey, when things shake out and learn who that opponent is, then you start beginning that process? Yeah, absolutely. When things, you know, kick off and we, we – see who we're going to play, then I'll just be locking in from there. And I don't want to just be watching teams, watching film on teams, and we're not going to be playing them. I don't want my mind racing and stuff like that, you know. We're trying to stay locked in on what's going on now. So, more Michael Pierce said to us after the game, those of us that were here in 2019, we remember what happened that day. What, what can you learn or what can you take away from thinking back to that time? We lost. You know, we lost that game, man. We were so young too, you know, we got Ricky receiver, a second year, first like first full time starting quarterback. Um, we had a couple vets, but running back was young, got Gus. You know, we had Mark Mark was like hurt, you know, our our all pro tight end Mark Andrews was, you know, nipped up. Like we we had guys that was down, but guys was fighting and we was young at the same time. We wasn't we was just starting to get into that situation, you know, playoff atmosphere and stuff like that. But I, I believe we're gonna be better now this year, this time around. Mark, you've matured since 2019 as a quarterback. Yeah. What would you say that maturity has looked like for you? How are you different as a quarterback from then besides just you? How am I different now? Uh, experience, I'm going to say. Um, just just knowing more, you know, just from seeing so much. Um, in, my, in my six years, just seeing a lot, I see that's where I've grown, grown the most. Calvin Cook, how, how much impact do you think? I mean, he'll have two weeks of practice before yeah. that pre, pre, you know, playoff game. Mm -hmm. How much impact do you think he can make? Oh, uh, man. Ain't no telling. Ain't no, time. Ain't no telling. You know, with our offense, the, the guys we have on offense, the offensive line we have, and him just being a dynamic player, he is the sky's the limit. You know, it, there's no limit for that. I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I believe he going to, when he get his opportunity, his number's called, he going to do what he do. You know, cook up. Your offensive line is, is giving you, you know, a lot of time to go yeah. a number of times this year, especially in late. How, how important has that been, and, and how um, has that? How would you describe, I guess, the relationship that you have with that in terms of that? Uh, it's very important um, for our guys to do their job. You know, they're, they're supposed to block. You know, it's not my job to block, drop back, read coverage, and block at the same time, you know. Um, but them just giving me a lot of time to uh, – read out concepts and um, read the defenses and get the ball to my guys is, is tremendous, you know. Um, I feel like that's any quarterback's dream to just sit back in the pocket and just let things happen, develop and just throw strikes. Um, 
but they, I, I believe they got better throughout the season. You know, guys going down, you know, just getting healthy at the right time and just blocking their tail off. Um, we just need to keep it going. Lamar, aside from team MVP, first team all pro um, by the NFLPA, voted by players, what does that mean to you? That's uh, a lot. It means a lot. You know, respect for my peers, you know, guys who, who I'm – who we trying to beat, you know, guys trying to beat us, who we, who we facing, you know, week in, week out. Uh, it means a lot. It's an honor. Lamar, we saw some of your interview with Tom Brady. You've been open about, you know, yeah. kind of how impressed you've been with him and how you look up to him. Is there another player that you can think of that kind of gets you kind of in that same mode that you get in when you're talking to Tom Brady? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's the seventh time. Super Bowl winning quarterback right there, you know, nobody beat that. So, you know, it's like, you're going to be excited talking to Tom, man. You know, we try to pick his brain or something like that. So I'm just always excited to speak to him. You know, he, he said to you uh, on the podcast that, you know, you're one of the reasons that people like watching the NFL, you know, in the way that you play. What does it mean to you when you have, you know, the GOAT saying to you that, you know, showing his respect for you and that he really admires your game? Yeah, it was an honor, you know. Um, I told him that. Uh, he was telling me about a clip from high school that went viral. I, was, I wasn't expecting him to say that, you know. Um, so that, that let me know, you know he's been watching a long time, you know. Uh, that's, just, that's just cool, you know, for Brady to, you know, feel that way about me as a player. That, that means a lot. There's a record number of black quarterbacks in the playoffs this year. Yeah. I'm wondering, is that encouraging to see? And do you sort of take pride watching a guy maybe like C.J. Stroud, who is yeah. a rookie and made it? In his first year, yeah, that's great to see. You know, um, life's you know life's just well, well, just different now. You know, um, stuff is evolving. Um, guys are just being great. You know, just showing off their true talent. And CJ Stroud, tremendous quarterback. Um, I told him when we played against him uh, earlier this season, first game of the season, I'm like, bro, you you amazing out there. You know, um, college not even nothing compared to how he is right now. You know, um, just from, from me watching from afar. He's a great quarterback, and for other quarter, black quarterbacks to be playing in the playoffs, that's tremendous. You know, um, hopefully more guys um, be included uh, as years go on. Lamar, we've seen you know, this is your most accurate year in terms of completion percentage. How much of that do you think is attributable to the footwork development that you've kind of put in over the years? Uh, I believe everything, you know, plays its part. You know, just maturity, footwork, um, studying. Um, everything, you know, just trying to be a better player, trying to be a great player um, at this at this uh, high level um, game. You know, we playing, I'm just trying to get better at everything. So I believe that's what's helping me out, you know, with the accuracy and stuff like that. Lamar, uh, Joe Flacco, you playing your teammates when you playing in the playoffs. Or are you going to be watching that game? What feelings do you get like from off the game? I don't know if I'm going to watch the game, but I know I'm going to watch the film. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see Joe back playing, you know, back playing, you know, because um, I always felt he was elite, you know, just from my rookie year watching him practice, seeing him throw the ball across the field from, you know, just flat foot and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, this guy, you know, his arm a cannon, you know. Um, but, you know, if we, if we play him, you know, just hopefully he'll be, you know, just showing off the Joe elite there, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it'll be great to play against him, though. Week for you? Are you are you antsy at all to get to the game, or you know what, what's it like for you right now? <laughs> I'm antsy, but I, I gotta you know I gotta stay locked in on what's you know what's ahead. And we have nothing ahead right now, you know. Um, we just practice and trying to get better, you know, for whoever our opponent is next week. But I'm def I'm definitely antsy though. Are you practicing without an opponent, not knowing you know, where you are now? Not if you're antsy. <laughs> <laughs> I told teammates mentioned how we kind of said. It. Them this year, how, how much more like freedom you had at the last scrimmage, yeah. especially in the system. Mm -hmm. I wonder, like, how, how did you approach that? And just like in the, in the bigger picture, how did you develop like the way you see a field, the way you read a, a game? Uh, well, it started with Coach Monk. You know, he already, he told me when he, when he first got here. You know, he texted me actually because I was down in Florida. He was up here, I guess. He was telling me, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give the keys to the offense. You know, it's up to you on uh, to make certain decisions at the line. If you don't like it, you know, put us in a better um, better situation. But if you mess up, it's going to be on you, you know. So, And I'm cool with that, you know, because I'm, I'm seeing the field. I'm, I'm seeing the field, and I'm out there. I'm the one, you know, got to make things happen, my teammates and I. And I can't give you the secret on how I see the game, bro. <laughs> you know, that I just give you that. <laughs> how did you kind of develop the skills to do, you know, some of the jump passes and sidearm throws that we've seen you make this, this year? Just delivering the baby. 
You know, I'm just trying to deliver the baby to my guys. You know, that's all. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, just get the ball to the to the, to the playmakers. That's my job. You know, I'm not trying to. I can't run it handed to them. You know, so I gotta try my best to. You know, my ability to get the ball to those guys and let them do the rest. You know, just like you know, probably week to the Dolphins game, I gotta get the ball to those guys and we see we all seen what they can do with the ball in their hands. So I just gotta do my job to keep trying to distribute the ball. Now, at this point, six years into your career, you, you talked to OBJ before he signed. You talked to Dalvin Cook. Yeah. How important is that role for you at this point in your career to be able to recruit guys? And what is your pitch? Are you a good? You obviously a pretty good recruiter. I don't know because they did. All right, OB, he he got here. He, you know, he signed right away. But Dalvin went to the Jets first. We ended up getting him like late in the season. So I don't really know how my recruiting game is. Got to talk to Eric. I'm not gonna talk to you. All right, Lamar, thank you. Thank you. I right, appreciate y'all.